In this series of lectures, we're going to look at ways that we can integrate data to add value with our Android apps. Now, data can come from many sources. It can come from the web, and it can also come from the phone, like GPS data, or accelerometer data, or photographs, or anything like that. So many times when we're able to mix data together, we find that we create information, which is data with value. So in this series of lectures, we're going to look at what we need to do to gather data and integrate data together. And the tricky thing is we're going to need to look at some advanced concepts. Uh, we're going to need to look at something called generics. We're also going to need to look at something called threading. We're also going to need to look at something called JSON. Each of these considered separately is a fairly advanced concept of its own. Uh, but we need to look at all three of these put together. So these lectures will probably span a bit of time. Okay, uh, first of all, let's take a look at what we can do when we do integrate data together. In this example, I have Plant Places Mobile, and you see I've selected an image here, uh, an image that's from, you know, theoretically could be from the camera on the phone. I choose Open Existing Image, and this is a picture of a canna leaf. So I'll click, and what will happen is it's going to use the data from this canna leaf uh, and index the top 16 colors, or I'm sorry, canna flower actually. It's going to index the top 16 colors that it sees. Now when I initially made this app, I created 12 colors, uh, eventually expanded it to 16. And the trick is I had something that was not very user friendly. Uh, as soon as you would click on one of these colors, it would give you back a text-based list of plants that have that color. User doesn't want to see a text-based list. The user wants to see uh, pictures. You know, the user wants to not just read what a plant name is, but understand what the plant looks like. And so uh, what's going to happen when I click on this, uh, we're going to get a newer version of this app which actually shows you pictures as well as the plant itself. But the trick is this. Those pictures take a while to download. So what we have to do is we have to download the information by using threads. Okay, we want to keep the user interface responsive while the user is using our app. So we have to use threads or different processes so that we can uh, allow the user to continue to interact with the app allow the UI to be responsive, but at the same time, be doing work in the background without interrupting the user's, uh, the user's process. So as soon as I click on the color, you're going to see that the next screen will appear. A moment after that, we'll get a list of plants that match that color and some placeholders for images. That list of plants has to hit the network. That list of plants has to hit the network or rather, the request for the list of plants has to hit the network, and the uh, network being the internet, and then we will get a response from the internet, which is plants that have that matching color. That takes a while, and we put that in a separate thread because we want the user interface to remain responsive. If we didn't put it in a separate thread, the user interface would lock up, the user would get frustrated and keep tapping on the phone, and eventually we would get an application not responding error, which we want to avoid. So number one, we're gonna see the next screen. Number two, a few moments after that, we'll see a list of plants that match that color. Number three, in yet another process, it's going to uh, download the images separately, and we'll look at the images that match this plant. Now, as you might imagine, downloading images takes a while as well. And so um, that is in a separate thread. So the images are going to come down. Uh, you'll see a little placeholder, and then the images will come down. Believe it or not, even this screen, what we've seen so far, operates in several different threads. There's one thread that takes a look at the picture and uh, counts the colors in the picture and then puts them in order. That's a very computationally intensive process. So that's one thread. Also, here's something very interesting, and I don't know how this resolution is going to look when you view the video, but if you look behind the can of flower, there's a whole lot of green. A whole lot of green. As a matter of fact, that's the predominant color in this picture. But if you look at the results, there is no green in the results. There's no green color in the results. 
So there's a separate filter that runs that knocks out colors that are not relevant. Every plant has green. There's no need to show a bunch of shades of green if you take a picture of a plant because every plant has green. We're more interested in the unique colors of the flower, the, the beautiful, the orange and yellow colors of this can of flower than the green. If we showed green, we'd show 16 shades of green and it would be useless. So that's a separate thread as well. So all of these things working in a different thread uh, is important for performance, but the trick is, on the other hand, uh, it's not a very simple thing to do. Now, look at the, uh, the optimist view of that. It means it requires a software developer to do that kind of work. It requires skilled labor. It's not something where you can just pull down a little web template and build an, an, an app that's a good app. You have to have some skills. So I'm going to click on this yellow color, and remember we're going to see several threads. I'm going to click, and this is in the emulator, so it's going to run a little more slowly than it would in an app. Number one, the UI responds. Number two, we get a list. Look at the placeholder, the logo on the left. And number three, uh, and I picked a very popular color. There we go. Number three, note that we now got color photos for each of these images. If we did not run it in a thread, the entire user interface would have locked up at that point and we would have uh, had a very frustrated user who would have kept clicking on the app and would have uh, would have probably caused an application not responding. And of course, the worst thing that can happen is that the user then uh, gives our app a poor rating. So uh, what are we going to look at? We're going to look at threads. We're going to look at JSON data. And we are going to look at generics, which will allow us to uh, use these threads. So these are the things that we're going to look at in our next uh, several slides, in our next several presentations. So this course, yeah, I'm offering both uh, in the University of Cincinnati and also in Northwestern University in Chicago. And what's really interesting about looking at these two courses is uh, one thing that I'm, I'm very impressed with is that uh, in Chicago, there's a, the city of Chicago has a data portal with a lot, of, um, a lot of JSON information that's available to somebody who wants to write a mobile app. Um, this absolutely blew me away. I, I'm, I'm never seen anything like this. But when you think about it, it's a lot of information that uh, the city is giving to its residents to enable them to make a better life for everybody, make, uh, make apps that leverage this data. I looked at the city of Cincinnati and didn't see anything like this, unfortunately. So um, lots of very interesting things to look at. I looked at things like uh, you can get CTA ridership. And if you click on export and then click on Soda API, it's a, uh, it's a JSON API that can be used to look at um, ridership on the CTA, on public transit uh, at different stops. Very interesting stuff. For our example, we're going to be using the live plantplaces.com JSON stream, which will allow you to search for plants by JSON data. So uh, that's what we'll be looking through in our example. So that's a quick summary of the videos that are to come. Uh, we're going to start with generics, and we're going to answer some interesting questions about inheritance and classes and objects while we do that. So I uh, look forward to seeing you in those videos. Thank you.